We are on a journey of change. After the live baiting last year, um, you, you got a new board, uh, you got a new CEO, um, and uh, we got a different um, background noise or a different uh, challenge, if you like. Um, and that is this term that's come onto the table about the social licence for greyhound racing. The social licence. That is, is it acceptable for greyhound racing to continue? Will the government continue to support greyhound racing? And it, I, I gotta say that I can only do it with your help. I'm just one person. You can look at me out here and you know that you know, each one of you knows more about greyhound racing than I do. Each one of you does, right? But I've got the job as the CEO of Greyhound Racing, and the reason why we've got these consultations is, and I'm just so delighted to see such the of the range of people that are here today, some you know, big names in the industry, together with a lot of people that are committed. And from the first workshop, I can see a set of faces uh, that I saw in the first workshop, because kind of I've got a good memory for faces. So people have come back, um, and, and it's really important that you make the contribution and that we get a sense of what you think we should do. Issues of tracks, you know, track safety, track design and lures. Now, I've just, I, I actually directed the vets, the race day vets on from the 1st of December to give me an injury report on every race meeting. Uh, that, that's what I've done and the data is quite compelling. So I've got a lot of knowledge about what happens at the tracks. And I've just started to release that. The, the information really wasn't that, um, uh, you couldn't make sense of it till you got enough of it. So on Friday, I released uh, a, a, an average club and then the club data itself to each club. And tomorrow, I'll release all of the information for every club to every club. But in it, in it, um, we've got a high level of injury. I'm hoping that we have a good discussion on what we can do, because in the end, the question is that if the injury rate is too high, and you might argue with me that the injury rate's too high, I, I, will, I will still retain the view, even after you argue that, that the public will say the injury rate's too high. You might not like that, but that, that's what the public's gonna say. That's the people probably that don't even bet on greyhound racing. That's what they're going to say. So, and the question for me is, given that we've got an animal welfare priority and given that I've got to reduce the euthanasia rates, the question in this workshop becomes, what should we do? What should we do? Is it the design of the track? Are the tracks too hard? Are they not properly maintained? Do we, do we have them going, the dogs going too fast? Those are the questions that I, I think, and there probably are other questions that, that are on my mind. It's an un unachievable thing to have a 100% uh, safe form of greyhound racing. There's so many variables just by virtue of the fact that we have eight greyhounds racing into one area on a track around the rail. So it's, it's an impossibility, I think, to actually achieve a zero tolerance, if that's, if that's the right word. We, we can certainly make it safer. So that's the objective. What can we do tomorrow that's better than today? Bearing that in mind, I think we've had a lot of improvement in safety of our racing by, via uh, track design and track surfaces over the past 20 to 30 years that I've been involved in the sport, the, uh, the, the track design and track surface maintenance is dramatically better than it was in the past. Well, it doesn't mean they're running too fast. It's, it's mean that over a period of time, the breeds got better and better, and the, the track surfaces have got faster and, and better uh, again. We've put in transition turns so that they scoot around these tracks a lot quicker. So over 40 years, we've basically put 40 lengths less on the, onto the dogs. So uh, obviously, if they're going at that pace, there's going to be collision injuries or high impact injuries um, purely because of the new pace or the extra pace they're running.
How do you stop dogs from going faster? How do you stop dogs from going faster? Um, I guess you slow down the tracks, and that's the, probably the only way. And uh, I think we need, uh, I'm not saying we do it dramatically, but I think we put some cushion into the surface of the track, uh, fluff it up a little bit so that perhaps we can just reduce that speed um, and at the same time putting that cushion into the track is less jarring effects on the dogs. Very essential that we have participant input into um, all decisions that are made in relation to Greyhound Racing's future. It's been sadly lacking in the past and the participants are very happy with the way these are being run at the moment. We're just hoping that the powers that be can understand the information that's out there, can decipher what's best for us and no doubt there'll be further consultation along the way because the industry consultative group, which I'm also on, um, will be obviously uh, looking at the results of this and we're very excited about the future going forward because of the workshops.